Hello, my name is Ben Griggs and welcome to the Basics of Shapeshifter Part 2. Today we will be discussing displacement mapping. If you're looking for the when to precomp and why tutorial, that will actually be Part 3. Before we get started, I want to make a very important note that we are using 16 bits per channel in our project settings color settings. By default, After Effects starts your projects with 8 bits per channel. And 16 bits per channel simply has many, many more levels of gray in between white and black. And these levels of gray are what we use to build our geometry in Shapeshifter, both through displacement and extrusion. So just be sure that we are at least at 16 bits per channel before starting on any of these projects. In front of us, we have two compositions open. One is our displacement map. We have a set of rings going from white to black and a black solid in there behind it. And to the right, this is a plain white square with Shapeshifter applied. Unlike the first tutorial, we have not done anything to this plain white uh, square before we applied Shapeshifter. This is important because we have the same aspect ratio between our displacement and the asset that we are, that we are displacing. If Once we apply the Shapeshifter effect, I also want to note that this is a 512 by 512 displacement map and the asset we are displacing is 1024 by 1024. So what's happening is the displacement map is being stretched to fill up our asset composition. This is important just for the aspect ratio. Let me show you here. We have a comp sized solid, so this is 16 by 9. And again, we have a square displacement map. If we use this square displacement map on something with a different aspect ratio, then you can see what's happening here. Basically, our displacement composition is being smashed down so that it assumes the aspect ratio of our asset. This may be a desired result, but it, it will probably throw you off at some point in time. So whenever we talk about pre-comping, we'll explain a little bit you know, how we can take our asset copy it, then pre-comp it, and use that as the uh, displacement map. But we're going to be going into that again in the next tutorial. Let's go back to our original extrusion. What we have are the whites and the blacks. The whites are displacing the fullest amount, and the blacks are not displacing anything at all. You see we have a flat solid right here in the middle. This is because on our effect we have a 3D extrusion thickness of the minimum value, which is 1. By default, that's 40, and that would just give you a thick, a thicker uh, base here. But we're only looking at displacement at the moment, so I'm going to remove this. One important thing to note is in Shapeshifter, we can use the alpha or transparency values before we apply Shapeshifter, as we did in tutorial one, with anything that has transparency or alpha values but we can also use the transparency values in our displacement map. So if I come to our displacement composition and apply a mask, you see we can build all of our geometry right here inside of a displacement composition. Now to further illustrate the how the displacement's working, I'm going to use this mask to cut down into our object and pan around to the side. Now again we have the whites being displaced the fullest amount this is our center line here. The whites are displaced the fullest amount, and the blacks are not being displaced very much at all. What I can do is come to our displacement composition and invert the channels, and we will see the opposite thing happening. It's still the same thing. It appears opposite because we have it inverted. We have all the whites still being displaced to the fullest amount and the blacks are not being displaced at all. This is a very thin one, one pixel wide center in there. Now if we adjust our displacement map, everything moves in relation to the next and everything uh, operates because we have even steps here, everything is staying on even steps. We're just increasing the scale at which they step away from each other. Now I want to go in and show you a composition that's very similar to what we had in the first tutorial. This is a layer of fractal noise. And below this layer is a white solid with a luma mat. 
let me put a colored solid down here so you can see we have this gives us plenty of transparency or alpha information as well as a nice variance between the blacks and the whites so this will actually give us an extrusion as well as a displacement so let's come here and link to this and you can immediately see this is very similar to what we had seen on the initial tutorial if I take the thickness back up and the displacement height down and you see this is actually exactly what we had from the first tutorial well we have a different fractal noise but the same the same methods here I can use the displacement height and no thickness at all and the reason this is important is whenever I use a pre-blur at this moment you notice nothing is happening the reason nothing is happening is we are on a plain white solid remember there's nothing going on there we don't have any texture we don't have any transparency or alpha information this is just a plain white solid so the pre-blur doesn't have anything to blur remember this is the same thing as if we had a fast blur applied before the effect in the stack here now if I come down to this alpha noise layer let me turn this one off and apply shape shifter to it then we again have the same thing however we do not have anything linked to a displacement layer but if I come into the displacement height and begin to adjust it we're actually using the asset itself as a displacement layer and as the alphas let me remove this thickness here the reason this is important is we can com mix and combine well let me come let me backtrack just a moment you see now that we have the uh, now that we have shapeshifter applied directly to the asset our pre-blur has an effect that's because without shapeshifter applied this is the asset and whenever we have we're adjusting a blur we're adjusting it in the stack so whenever this is going to come into play in the next tutorial when we start discussing like textures whenever we map a texture onto a onto our asset and we don't want to blur the texture we want to be able to see that nice and clearly so this is where that's going to come into play where we can build our geometry completely within a different a different manner completely within the uh, displacement map over here now again what we're doing right here is displacing the asset itself we don't have any displacement layer attached what we can do is come into the displacement layer and link back into this copy of the rings that we had now you should be able to see we have these rings as well as this noise they're both affecting displacement and they are also both affecting the the alpha or transparency of our of our assets here so if I come back to our rings composition and turn off the masks without this alpha noise composition we would have a solid inside but because we're combining these two alphas we have uh, the combination of both or the the least amount of both let's come back here to displacement one and show you this is because we have pre-multiply on if I turn pre-multiply off then we're only going to use displacement values from the displacement layer however we still combine the alpha levels from both the displacement layer and the asset itself so really there's a big mix and match here there's really a lot that you can do uh, I just want you to understand which one is which and you you kind of want to plan ahead and know where you're going to pre-comp what you're going to use for your displacement layer and what what asset you're actually going to be applying shapeshifter to and keep in mind that aspect ratio because whenever especially if you're doing something like an something a little more geometric like circles or if you have uh, fractal noise with squares whenever we change these aspect ratios it's getting stretched out to match the asset now one last thing that I want to touch on for this tutorial is some text and this has to do with the with the pre blur of shapeshifter because again we need this pre this little bit of an edge in order to cause an extrusion 
this is just a couple of large letters and if we zoom in here you should be able to see right here on the corner let me let me grab one of these lights and change the color of it there we go with a little more contrast we can see hopefully you can see through the compression of the tutorial there's a little bit of a corner right here if we look right here it's not there this is part of the pre-blur of shapeshifter so you know when we have a sharp edge and we put a blur in it then it kind of covers up the corner so if we're using this displacement mapping if we're using itself as a displacement map we can add a little bit of displacement height so this map kicks in and whenever it does I don't know if you could see it that makes that little corner pop out it gives makes that little corner go away so if I come back to zero you see the corners there and now I'm going to come back up here to point three and now that corner's gone now if we keep going up with this what happens is we start to get like a really rounded corner so let me put this back up to the default of two it's not too rounded at the very moment but if we start going up to you know three or four or something like that you really start to get a, a sharper curve or a, a softer curve I should say so we're going to be discussing this a little bit further in when to pre-comp because we can't get this text too much larger within the comp window before we apply shapeshifter so we've got a few tricks to enlarge it when we pre-comp it and then shrink it back down and that will really clean up all of our edges and corners if you have any questions about any of these tutorials please feel free to post them below the video itself I'm going to be checking back in. Again, my name is Ben Griggs and thank you.